everybody, it's Abby from Knife Fork Spoon Kitchen Giggles here. Today we are going to have a really fun conversation. And the topic is cross-contamination in the kitchen. One of the things you've probably heard me say is that by and large, I don't let the kids handle raw meat. And that's for a really important reason. Just like we have germs and disease and all kinds of other things in the air and the environment around us, food has its own particular um, strain, if you will, of foodborne pathogens. And there's some really famous ones you've heard of, E. coli, salmonella, and there's hundreds of other not famous ones. All can make you equally sick, all can do the same amount of damage, just in a different kind of way. So one of the things that's always really important before you get into the kitchen is washing your hands when you start so you get off the grime of the world before your food and then <laughs> the girls are really excited step back please <sighs> celeste step back please thank you so you wash off the grime from the world and then also if you've been working with something like raw meat it's not going to get the germs that are on this meat all over everything but what we're gonna to do today is, Celeste, put that down so you can get started, please. Is we are going to simulate, through the use of paint, let me have these, please, girls. Through the use of paint, cross-contamination. So the dish that we're having for dinner tonight is a sesame chicken. So I went ahead and sliced the chicken, and I'm actually gonna move it off the table so the kids don't get paint in it. Um, but. What we're simulating now is they're gonna put their hands in the paint and they have the recipe laid out here. So because they're not reading yet, I have laid out everything they need. So a quarter teaspoon uh, measuring spoon is in front of the ginger. One teaspoon measuring spoon is in front of the garlic. One tablespoon is in front of the soy sauce. One tablespoon is in front of the rice vinegar. One tablespoon is in front of the sesame oil. And a quarter tablespoon, quarter tablespoon, that would be a lot. A quarter teaspoon is in front of the salt. So ladies, Charlotte, please come stand over here. Before we get started, girls, you're gonna put one teaspoon of ginger in. Hold on, not yet, before we get started. We're gonna do one garlic, two soy sauce, two rice vinegar, and two sesame oil, okay? How much salt? And just one of the salt. So now what we're gonna do is, I put a white tablecloth down so it'll be really clear where all the paint gets, but I'm gonna actually have the kids put both of their hands in their paint. So Celeste, here's your red paint, and Charlotte, there's your, put your hands in. And so this is simulating dirty hands. I'm not gonna have them re-dip their hands because uh, you know, as they're using it, it's gonna get thinner and thinner. So go ahead and put both hands in, and now go ahead and start making dinner. So we are gonna have paint all over everything. This is gonna be awesome, you guys. But it really is gonna show the kids. And if you have children at home that fight you with washing hands, this is a great for thing for them to be able to see. So go ahead and hold your hands up and show everybody. We got painty hands. My kids tell me they come in from the chicken coop and they say, I don't wanna wash my hands. And I say, please wash your hands. And so now they'll be able to see visually why washing their hands is so important because they're gonna see the transfer of the paint just like if it were germs onto everything they touch. So, okay, girls, we need one of these, two of these, two of these, two of these, one of these, and one of these. Go ahead and start making our marinade. So, one of these. Yep, so you two figure it out. Go ahead and start making your marinade. <laughs> oh, is it slippery? Here, I'm happy to help take lids off. I'll do all the lids for you. Hey, look, now I've got paint too. Oh, Here. would you like me to help you with that lid? One. So if we were to assume that purple and red were different germs, then now, even though I was perfectly clean and just going to be a, vis a helper, now I've got germs too. Here, I'll help with these. Should have thought about this before, but I guess this is real life. And two cups of this. Two of those, yeah. Should I hold this? Yeah, one. Okay, one. Two. Good job. Now for this one. Hey, 
Okay, you're moving the whole table, so let's be careful. No, I'll do, I'll do this and we'll do that. Oh, we might end up actually eating some paint tonight. <laughs> Okay, you did it. And then you have to wash it. I will have to wash all of it. And now, have we done rice vinegar? No. No? But we did do the garlic? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to take the measuring spoon out of the garlic. Oh. Yes. Okay, go ahead and put the thing done. And now what do we need to do to mix this marinade up? We need to whisk. recipe itself. This is a really um, mild sesame sauce that we're making. You would slice your chicken and cook it until the pink is gone 165 degrees. Take the chicken out of the pan, put the sauce in. Once it's cooked and it starts to thicken, put a half a teaspoon of cornstarch in until it's really thickened. Put the meat back in, so with rice, veggies, the whole nine yards. I intentionally make this sauce a little bit more mild so the kids can enjoy it more. It's not as heavy as you would find in a restaurant. Okay, how do you guys feel about your sauce? Is it all mixed yeah. up? Okay, let's show everybody your hands. Yeah. So we are still painting, but I'm going to pick the camera up, and I want to show you where else the paint is. It's actually in some places that I didn't expect, and it's, in places, it's not in places that I did expect. So the one place I didn't expect was me. So just shows you if you're an adult working in the kitchen and your child hasn't washed their hands, there's a potential that you get their junk. The one that I did expect, I expected the kids to have it on their face or their clothes because they were touching their face or their clothes. And it's interesting to see that other than a little bit of spot on Charlotte's arm and a tiny bit in Celeste's cuff, we really don't have that much paint on the children themselves. The mixing bowl, looks kind of decent. Let me see if I can pick this up and show you. Let me see if I can turn the camera around. Okay, here we go. So you'll see the mixing bowl has some paint on it. The tablecloth also has paint on it, but what's really grimy are all of the bottles and in particular, look at the lids. So with these spice jars, you know, depending on what kind of um, it stinks. It does stink. Um, depending on, you can go wash your hands in the bathroom sink. Uh, depending on what kind of germ or foodborne pathogen or actual disease we're dealing with, they could live for a while. Some of them might die really quickly on the surface, but some of them might live for a long time. So now my ginger here and my salt over here have gunk all over them. So if I pick this up in an hour to make a different dish, I'm potentially recontaminating everything. So this is great food for thought as you guys are working with your kids in the kitchen and you're encouraging them to wash your hands. Um, this was, I had no idea what to expect today. This was a lot of fun. And I think my kids will have a better understanding now of work. Let's see if I can get this spun back around me. Um, working with clean hands and why it's so important, especially with everyday environmental things like when you're playing with the dog and the cat and the chickens and if you have other animals or when you've been out digging in the dirt. So guys, this was a lot of fun. I appreciate you coming along on this ride with us today. And we are going to be at two o'clock. I'm trying to see the clock out what time it is. In a little over half an hour, we're gonna be on the Too Cool for School page. Um, Calvin's gonna be making some brownies and I'm throwing a ton of math Hi. conversions. <laughs> Charlotte says hi. I can't see. And fractions hi. in to him on the fly with that. So if you're not a member of that group, the around. they Check have a ton of awesome stuff to help us as we deal with our new reality of kids are at home and we are responsible for teaching them things. So my um, purpose with that conversation at two o'clock is to share how you incorporate math in the kitchen, which we'll actually be talking about later this week on this channel also. So thanks everyone. I've got some paint to clean up now. This was awesome. If you guys have any other ideas, um, this came from a friend of mine who said, hey, uh, you might want to consider this because this is real in the kitchen that, and it's awesome and it's fun. So if you guys have other ideas like this, please shoot them my way. I'm happy to put them into action. And I'm seeing now I have a 
friend of mine who is a doctor and she's saying you'd be shocked at how many germs bacteria and toxins live in the dirt including botulism so botulism is one of those things that is a foodborne pathogen that is real and it is nasty and it will make you not feel good so washing your hands adults sometimes we need a reminder but we won't talk about that now and the little people especially the little people helping them understand the soap and water. So to all of you, thank you for joining me. I'm gonna give you one more visual of this wild table we've got going on here. All of this paint simulated germies. All right, folks, have a great day. I will see you tomorrow.